नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 15 इन अवर कोर्स ऑन ऑपरेशंस मैनेजमेंट सो करंटली वी आर डिस्कसिंग द बेसिक एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ फोरकास्टिंग एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर वी हैव कवर्ड फोर सेशंस वी हैव कंप्लीटेड डिस्कशन इन फोर सेशंस ऑन फोरकास्टिंग वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट दैट हाउ मच वी शुड प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम द ऑपरेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी आर ट्राइंग टू सी दैट वट it can be the demand or what is the expected demand in the next year or in the next month if you remember we have seen in the previous session that there are quantitative methods of making the forecasts we have seen the simple average method simple moving average method weighted moving average method and we have found out that each one of them can be used in certain specific application areas now how to identify where which method can be used that is really important and that decision is based on the scatter or the distribution or the variation of the data with respect to time so we have seen that on y axis usually we take demand and on x axis we take the time so we try to understand that how the demand has varied over the last 5 years if we are taking the yearly demand into picture if we are taking the monthly data into picture we will say over the previous 5 months or over the previous 7 months or over the previous 12 months how the demand has varied or how the actual demand has varied with respect to time and based on that we decide on our method just to have a brief review in four five sentences what we have covered in the previous session if the data is scattered over a central line there is little variation above and below the central line we can use a simple average method because we see that data is scattered around a central line we can make use of simple average method but in case there is a increasing trend or there is a decreasing trend observed in the data our simple average method will not be suitable all of us must keep in mind that simple average method will give us a average value which will be far away from the actual demand how we can see that we can see that if there is a increasing trend the average value may give us a under forecast if there is a decreasing trend the average value may give us a over forecast so we have to see that simple average may not be relevant wherever there is a increasing or a decreasing trend so how to solve this problem in that case we will give more weightage to the last 3 months data or the last 3 years data whatever is our time domain so if we are doing the calculation on yearly basis we will consider last 3 years data if we are doing the calculation on monthly basis we will cover the last 3 months data only and those 3 months we will do simple average and we will find out that what is going to be the forecast but still there can be a problem there can be a increasing or rapidly increasing trend in those 3 months or those 3 years also now how to overcome this problem we can overcome this pro problem by giving more weight to the last year's data for example we are forecasting for 2018 and we have the actual demand data for 2017 we will give maximum weightage to the 2017 data point then slightly less weightage to 2016 data point then even lesser weightage to 2015 data point so we are only considering the last 3 years data or in our previous session we have taken monthly data for the last 3 months data only and we are ignoring the rest of the data points that are available with us why because there is a increasing trend for the demand so we ignore the previous uh, data points we only consider the last 3 months data points only and within those 3 months also we are assigning maximum weightage to the last month's data for example currently it is month of 
july so we want to forecast for august we will give maximum weightage to july slightly less weightage to june and even less weightage to may so from may very less weightage june slightly higher weightage july maximum weightage and then we forecast for the month of august so all this we have covered in the previous session we have done some calculations also we have considered very simple problems also with assigning weights to the previous months or previous years data and then doing the forecast for the next month or the year based on the problem that we have seen just one joke is coming to my mind that that uh, emphasizes the importance of averages and how sometimes averages can be misleading there was a person who was standing across a river and he wanted to cross that river so he was maybe uh, good at mathematics he asked a passer by a person who was again passing through the we can say the passage or the path he asked him that what can be the average depth of this river so he said it is 3.5 feet this person said okay the average height is 3.5 my height is 6 feet so maybe it is higher than the average value i must be easily able to cross this river so he entered into the river and never came out so the averages can sometimes be misleading and we should not blindly follow the averages so we should follow the averages but with a little pinch of salt maybe we should see the data that how the data is varying so if we can fit a central line or the data is scattered around the central line we can follow the simple average method but if the data is showing a specific trend we must not follow the simple average we must focus on the moving average or the weighted moving average method now there is another advancement in the field of weighted moving average which is called the exponential smoothing in which the weights keep on decreasing exponentially maybe suppose we have the 10 years or 10 months data available with us we will assign maximum weightage to the latest data and then the weights will keep on reducing and as we are going far off from today that weights will keep on reducing for example if we want to forecast for the month of 2008 or for the year of 2018 we will give, give suppose 0.9 weightage to the data of 2018 and then we will sorry to the data of 2017 and then for 2016 lesser weight 2015 even lesser weight 2014 even lesser weight so the weights will keep on reducing as we are going farther and farther from today's date so that is what is the basic concept of exponential smoothing we have understood that we give weights to the data points in the previous session and how these weights are assigned that is adding an element of subjectivity nobody has questions or maybe you may question in the discussion board that sir how we can decide that 0.5 should be given to the as a weightage to the previous months data why it is 0 0.5 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 only why it's not 0 0.7 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 so these kind of questions can come and yes these decision regarding how much weight must be given adds a you can say element of subjectivity into the objective methods of forecasting or into the quantitative methods of forecasting so there are mathematical tools there are statistical tools that can help us in the calculation or in the finding out of these weights also but in exponential smoothing the it is assumed that the weights will weights will vary exponentially so we will see that how exponentially the weights will vary with the help of certain slides and once the weights are varying exponentially where these methods can be used or exponential smoothing method where it can be used so it can be used where we want to give the maximum weight 
to the previous months or previous years data and we want that the farthest readings must be given minimum weight so that they have the minimum influence on the forecast that we are going to make for the future. So, we will try to understand the exponential smoothing method today then it is a bridged into a equation which can be used for making a forecast. But the basic concept is that the weights will vary exponentially over a period of time maybe the most recent will be given the maximum weight and then the weight will exponentially reduce as we go farther and farther from the forecast period. So, let us try to understand this with the help of a presentation and start our discussion. So, in our simple average method we have seen all the previous years data are considered and equal weights are assigned. In case of moving average, we neglect some of the readings or some of the data point. We consider only the latest data points, but we give equal weightage to all the previous data points or all the data points being considered for making a forecast. In weighted moving average, we consider the last 3 months or 3 years data points only, but we assign specific weights to the 3 data points. So, all the 3 data points are not given the equal weights. So, please keep in mind that 3 I am taking as an example. You can use a 4 period moving average also, you can use a 5 period moving average also. Suppose you have 20 years data available with you, you want to focus on last 5 years only. So, you can make use of a 5 period moving average method. So, n is 5 in this case. In my example that I have taken n can be 3. So, that is the purely your decision that what is the period you are going to select. But the important point to note is in simple average, we give equal weightage to all the previous years data or previous months data. In moving average, we consider the previous 3 or 4 or 5 years data only, we neglect all the other data points, but we give equal weightage to all these 3 or 5 data points that we have considered. In weighted moving average, we further fine tune our forecast by giving specific weights to the previous years demand. Maybe the most recent may be given the maximum weight and we have also seen this with the help of an example in our previous session. So, in exponential smoothing, we will include all the past observations, but the weight assigned will be more for the recent observations. So, as is given on the slide, the weight weigh the recent observations much more heavily than very old observations. So, on your screen you can see on y axis we have the weight. It is not the demand. Sometimes the students or the learners confuse it with demand. This is the weight and this is today. We are here. So, the data which is most recent, we are giving the maximum weight and the weight is exponentially reducing and the, this is maybe the oldest observation or the oldest data point is here and we are assigning the minimum weight to the oldest data point and we are assigning the maximum weight to the most recent data point. So, the decreasing weight given to older observations. So, suppose we give alpha value to our we can say the most recent uh, data point the next years or data point will be given lesser weight and that distribution will be exponential distribution it will reduce exponentially. So, the value of alpha which we call as the smoothing coefficient the name of the method is exponential smoothing. So, weigh the recent observations much more heavily than the very old observations I have already highlighted. Now, suppose we give the smoothing coefficient value alpha as 0 0.7. So, the latest observation is given the way weightage of 0 0.7, then it will keep on changing. Next year, it will be alpha into 1 minus alpha because it is varying exponentially. Then for next year, it will be alpha into 1 minus alpha to the power 2. So, it will keep on decreasing, the weight is keep on decreasing. So, if in these values 
suppose you take alpha as 0.7 the value of 0.7 into 1 minus 0.7 will certainly be less than 0.7 similarly 0.7 into 1 minus 0.7 to the power whole square will be even lesser so the values or the weights are reducing exponentially now suppose we as we have considered in our previous session we have taken last 3 months data point only so if we give weightage alpha as 0.7 so the month if you remember in our previous session we were forecasting for the month of december so if we give alpha equal to 0.7 for the month of november if we are forecasting for december exponentially the weight will come down for the month of october and further it will come down for the month of september so we will assign minimum weight to the month of september or to the value or the demand data for the month of september then slightly higher weight in for the demand data for the month of october and the maximum weight for the demand data for the month of november so september october november weight is increasing november october september weight is decreasing how it is decreasing it is decreasing exponentially and this method will give us a you can say easier math, uh, way to decide on the weights that if we decide on one value that this is going to be my alpha value the other values can be calculated based on alpha into 1 minus alpha then alpha into 1 minus alpha to the power 2 so very easily we can calculates the weights that can be assigned to the older observations so as per the forecast we have seen the most recent we are giving the value alpha so f if we want to forecast for the period t plus 1 so we will see alpha into demand for the previous year then alpha into 1 minus alpha demand for the older observation alpha into 1 minus alpha to the power 2 for the even older observation so as the observations are getting older the weights are getting lesser and lesser so as we have seen in exponential smoothing method when we are making a forecast ft represents the forecast so if the we are forecasting for t that is t may be the forecast for the month of december as we have seen in the previous session so when we are forecasting for the month of december we should have here the value t minus 1 or we can write here ft plus 1 so t plus 1 becomes equal to december and your t becomes then november so we should have we can make use of the previous month's data for making a forecast and this is basically then the forecast for the month of november so this is the forecast for the month of november this is the demand for the month of november and this forecast we are doing t plus 1 for the month of december and this we can see that the previous forecast and the previous demand if is known to us we can make the forecast for the next month so just to simplify we should not bog down by these equations to simplify the things we can just take an example that suppose we want to make a forecast for the month of december what is required we require the demand for the month of november and the forecast for the month of november so if we know the forecast for november and demand for november very easily we can make a forecast for the month of december now for calculating the forecast or for the month of november we require the demand for the month of october and the forecast for the month of october so this equation then simplifies into ft please focus on this equation only this is the correct equation so if t is december we can say we require the demand for t minus 1 that is november and we require a forecast for t minus 1 that is november so as i have given the example if we want to forecast for the year 2018 we require the demand for 2017 and the forecast for 2017 if we are doing based on monthly data points 
if we want to forecast for january we require the demand for december and the forecast for december that much if you can remember you can very easily use the forecasting technique that is exponential smoothing alpha value definitely has to be assumed or there are methods through which we can have a uh, you can say good estimate of the value of alpha we will try to understand this with the help of an example in our subsequent slides thus the new forecast is weighed sum of old forecast and the actual demand so actual demand basically we will only know when that period has passed so if we are forecasting for december we will require the forecast for november as well as the actual demand for november so only two values dt we should say dt minus 1 here and ft minus 1 are required compared with n for moving average so here we require only two values as i have already highlighted whereas in previous methods we require n values n means maybe last 3 years last 5 years or last 10 years n can be 3 5 10 so we require lot of data but in exponential smoothing two values the previous years data uh, demand data as well as the previous years forecast data if we are using a yearly calculation if we are using a monthly calculation we require previous months demand and the previous months forecast and both these two data points can help us to make a forecast using the exponential smoothing method so parameter alpha is determined empirically so i have told you that empirically alpha can be determined rule of thumb says that alpha value can be equal to or less than 0 0.5 and many times alpha is 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 is assumed for doing the exponential smoothing calculations so forecast for k periods into future ft plus k is actually the forecast ft now let us try to uh, take this example and i think it will clarify all the doubts that may have uh, maybe occurred or that may have come to your mind over the period of today's discussion one of the two wheeler manufacturing company experienced irregular but usually increasing demand for three products the demand was found to be 420 bikes for june and 440 bikes for july so you have the demand data available for the month of june and july 420 and 440 respectively they use a forecasting method which takes average of the past year to forecast future demand so they are using simple average method also using the simple average method demand forecast for the june is found to be 320 bikes now you have three data points that is that are available with you the demand forecast for june is 320 bikes the actual demand for june is 420 bikes and the actual demand for july is 440 bikes use a smoothing coefficient of 0 0.7 to weigh the recent demand most heavily and find the demand forecast for august now how we can do the calculation here very easily we can say that as per our equation for the month of august if we want to forecast what are the two important values required as per equation we require the forecast for july and we require the actual demand for july now actual demand for july as you know is given 440 bikes we require the forecast for july and for forecast of july what are the two things required for forecast of july we require the actual demand for june and the forecast for june forecast for the month of june has been calculated using the simple average method and the value given is 320 the actual demand for june is 420 bikes which is given in the problem therefore for calculating the forecast for the month of august we need to first calculate the forecast for the month of july which is not given here but 
the data points required to calculate the forecast for July is given. We have the demand for June and the forecast for June. So, very easily we can first calculate the forecast for July and then using that forecast and the actual demand that is already known for the month of July as 440 bikes, we can easily calculate the forecast for August. So, you can see using the exponential smoothing method and the exponential smoothing coefficient as 0 0.7, we can calculate F t for the August month. The equation is exponential smoothing coefficient alpha into the demand of previous month plus 1 minus alpha into the forecast of the previous month. So, d t minus 1 is the actual demand for the recent period, f t minus 1 is the demand forecast for the recent period and f t is the forecast of the next period demand. So, for July first we have to do the calculation, smoothing coefficient is 0 0.7, 420 is the actual demand for for the month of June and 1 minus alpha into 320 which is the forecast for the month of June based on the simple average method. So, this comes out as 390 as the forecast for the month of July. Similarly, once we have the forecast for July, actual demand for July is already known as 440. So, we can calculate using the same equation, we can calculate the forecast for the month of August 0 0.7 that is the smoothing coefficient into the demand for the month of July that is 420 already known to us and forecast for the month of July we have already calculated as 390. So, 425 is the forecast for the month of August. So, using a simple equation F t is equal to alpha into the demand of t minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha into the forecast of the period t minus 1, we can calculate the forecast for the period t. Now, many times we require to calculate the forecast error also or the accuracy of our forecast. So, for that we usually make use of a term called MAD which is mean absolute deviation. Now, what is mean absolute deviation? This is a sum of the absolute value of forecast error for all the periods divided by the number of periods. So, it is the summation of the forecast errors for all the periods divided by the total number of periods. So, we can see the forecast error can be calculated using the forecasted demand as we have learnt in the last 2-3 sessions how we can make a forecast. We have seen simple average, moving average, weighted moving average, exponential smoothing method. So, using any of the method we can forecast the demand, then there will be actual demand as experienced in the market. So, the difference between the forecast and the actual demand will give us the forecast error. Suppose we have the forecast error available with us for the last 5 years. So, we will add up the forecast error for the last 5 years and then we will divide it by 5 and we will get a mean absolute deviation value. Now, how, where this value can be useful or how we can make use of this value? We can use this value for comparing two or three different methods of forecasting. Suppose, for any given data, we make use of simple average method, weighted moving average method and the exponential smoothing method. So, we will get three forecasts for every year. And then we can calculate the forecast error using each method and then sum up all the errors and find out the mean absolute deviation. So, the method which gives us more accurate forecast or maybe the less value of the mean absolute deviation, we can select that method for making a forecast for that particular segment. So, with this we come to the end of our discussion on forecasting. In forecasting, we have covered 5 different session, week 3 was focused on forecasting only and we have seen that 
how we can make use of simple techniques for developing a forecast. We have seen in the first session what is the need requirement and importance of forecasting, how the forecasted demand can be used for making decisions for, by the managers of an organization. Then we have seen the forecasting system that how an accurate forecast can be made or what are the various elements of the forecasting system. Then we have seen the qualitative methods of forecasting that is estimated surveys or the Delphi method. Finally, we have seen the quantitative methods of forecasting in which we have covered the simple average, the moving average, the weighted moving average and the exponential smoothing method. Also, there is a time series forecasting model in which we take care of the four important elements that is the trend component, the seasonal component, the cyclic component and the random component. So, this time series model is also very very relevant and used widely for making the forecast. The only complication in using this model is the calculation of the seasonal index and the cyclic index and random uh, you can say index. So, we can calculate easily the trend component using the regression method, but there are mathematical tools for calculating the seasonal and the cyclic components also. Basically, the forecast in time series model is made up of the four components, the trend component, the seasonal component, the cyclic component and the random component. So, the main issue is related to the calculation of the seasonal indices and the cyclic uh, we can say index. So, basically we can use the time series models also for forecasting uh, the demand, but as the time is limited we have to cover the topic of forecasting in two and a half hours only because our overall objective is to learn the basic aspects of operations management and sales forecasting is one aspect of operations management. We have tried to give due weightage to this topic topic in our discussion. And for further you can say doubts and clarifications, you can always write on the discussion board and we would be more than happy to give you the replies to the best of our abilities. Thank you very much.